Hi, guys. Welcome back. We are on to Enneagram number four today and our fifth session in this CEU. So just a reminder, um, the test, to take the Enneagram test, the link is below the video, underneath uh, the YouTube video here, and also the notes in the fill in the blanks are, the link is also there as well to get those. So um, you can print those out or use them on your tablet to follow along with us today. So type number four that we will be um, learning about today is called the individualist. And um, yeah, it's exciting to get to talk about this one. Um, this is actually my very lowest, so it's not really me at all. But um, but I really respect and value individualists because I um, I think they're just so different and so they're so interesting to me because it's so different than who I am. So today, um, as I just said, we're going to be talking about the individualist, and our Bible figure that we will be talking about is Joseph. And the Bible reference that uh, Jason will be specifically talking about is John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And so just our purpose today is to better understand the individualists, their strengths, weaknesses, and communication styles. So let's dive in. So the Enneagram type four is called the individualist. So these are people that can often be described kind of as dramatic, artistic, um, melancholic, and um, intuitive. And so these people are people that are very creative. They are the artistic types, the ones that um, are kind of can see the world in a different way and through a creative lens. Um, so photographers or artists or musicians, um, very creative people are the individualists. And so I think that's like, I'm not very, you guys know, super artistic or musical or any of those things. And so I think it's just so cool how God has made individualists um, so unique and given them such skills and passions that they can really use um, to encourage people in the world and do it in a way that other people don't normally think about. So I just think that's really interesting for them. Um, their besetting sin, so the sin that kind of kind of can keep coming up or be kind of a constant um, problem, is envy. So oftentimes individualists are, as I said, very creative, very artistic, um, kind of contemplative. They they can really think about things in ways that other people don't, but they can kind of their besetting sin is envy, so they can envy other people's skills or other people's um, creative minds. They want to be unique and they want to be creative. And so when other people are that way, I think sometimes it's easy for them to become envious of other people's skills or other people's talents. Um, and so the underlying emotion that individualists often kind of have to work through is shame. They also, kind of like some of the other Enneagrams we have talked about before, they really want to be successful. They want to be creative. They want to be able to produce um, creative things, either in writing or in art or in music or... Um, yeah, just all the different kind of like outlets for that. They really want to be unique and to be creative. And so that can be their kind of ultimate goal. But if they do not kind of feel like they are unique or they're creative, then they have that shame that they aren't good enough, um, that they, they really kind of carry that weight, kind of similarly to the achiever that we learned about last week. But... Um, kind of in a different way, they still carry that shame that they are not as creative as they should be, or they should be this way, or they should be able to do that. And so um, that often is something like an emotion that individualists kind of need to wrestle through as they um, kind of learn more about themselves and are on this, this kind of 
self-discovery journey. Um, so twos often believe that they must be unique. So being unique is very important to them. They do not want to do what everybody has done in the past. They don't want to um, kind of just go with the flow with what people think. They often are kind of um, self-thinkers and think outside of the box and want to be unique and really value being unique and expressing themselves in a unique way. And they really value being different. They want to be different than um, the normal person. They want to um, be able to think of things differently or produce um, things differently or um, kind of express themselves in a different way. They really value um, not doing what the majority of people are doing. So those are kind of the driving motivation is to be unique and to be different. So Enneagram 4s are just um, really good at being creative and um, artistic and um, kind of expressing themselves in different ways. And then Jason's coming up, and he's going to talk about some of the spiritual formation parts for the Enneagram 4 and Joseph from the Bible. Thank you, uh, Kristen. And, um, yeah, we, we love um, the individualist, right? Most of us, uh, are, are we see them a lot in roles in like worship leaders and songwriters, musicians, and so certainly in the in the church, um, these individualists are are many times uh, an integral part of our of our worship experience to God, and so we're very very thankful for them. Um, Joseph is one of those Bible characters that I think uh, really, really reminds us of some of the best and the worst of, of fours. Um, like you, you remember Jacob, or, or Joseph was the youngest of all of, of Jacob's children, and um, he had these, these two visions, right, that, that he was going to rise to a place of great prominence, and that his brothers were going to bow down and worship worship him, and and so um, it's like the dream for 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 a four. It's it's like I'm going to stand out, and everyone's going to see that I'm standing out uh, and standing above above the rest. Uh, but it, it takes a certain kind of stupid to go and tell your older brothers that uh, that. This is the plan that God has for me to rise above you. Uh, but this is what Jacob did, now, or Joseph did. Now, probably most of us, we would want to throw our brother into a pit or sell him off as well if, if he did this. And, th and that's what happened to Joseph, right? His brothers uh, threw him into that pit, then they pulled him out, sold him into slavery. Um, we know, long story short, Joseph sold to, to Potiphar, uh, shows himself faithful. God blesses him. He matures, grows up, right? And, and eventually, uh, Joseph finds himself in a place of leadership and prominence in Egypt. In fact, only, only second to Pharaoh himself. Well, then his brothers come in in a time of famine, all right? And so here's that four coming out again uh, where, where uh, Joseph now sees a fulfillment of the visions that God had given him many years ago, and uh, he is in that place of standing out and standing above uh, his brothers. But the, the problem is, is Joseph's brothers don't know it's Joseph, right? And Joseph knows who they are. He sees them. And so he goes through the, sort of these, these periods of, of testing his brothers to see where they're at, to see, uh, to see how they've evolved, to see how they've grown and matured. And, and so he puts them through these tests without them actually knowing that they're going through these tests before he ever reveals uh, that he's, he's Joseph, the brother that they sold off. Now, this would make absolutely no sense to like a nine. And we'll talk about that in a few weeks. A nine, a peacemaker. This idea of him putting through tests would make, would make no sense to, to them. Uh, but, but for fours, they can sort of 
uh, they can sort of thrive off of, of sensitivity and drama. And this is what Joseph was doing. He was building up this drama to reveal uh, himself uh, to, to his brothers. And uh, we know the story that he, that he eventually did. Uh, but God truly used this man Joseph in a, in a mighty way. And in his story, we can see some of the best and the worst of, of fours. Now, fours um, need, to, need to keep in mind some important things when it comes to their, their spiritual formation. Um, for all of their desire to be, to be unique and to be, to be different, um, fours can take heart in knowing that God has uniquely gifted them to bear His image to the world. Um, so fours can express beauty and creativity and emotionally, our emotional honesty to God um, in, a, in a way that, that perhaps other personality types uh, cannot. Now there are some things that spiritually speaking come very naturally to, uh, to, a, to a four um, that, that might not come as natural to others. Things like solitude. Um, solitude is something that, that a four many times will thrive on. Like they can be sort of introverted uh, by nature, right? So being able to just get away and be by themselves with God can be, uh, can be very engaging uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a four. Uh, it's in these times that maybe their imagination and creativity can just flourish in these times of being alone. Uh, things like journaling can be can can be or can be very natural to a to a four as well. Um, um, they can they can write down their their hearts their their feelings. They can pen songs, write poems, maybe even draw uh, as they express themselves and their their emotions. Uh, but things that spiritual practices that don't come very natural to. A, to a four could be things like fellowship, um, sort of forcing themselves to be around or to be in communion with, uh, with other, other people. And fellowship for all of us truly is a necessary rhythm for, for all of us. Uh, but fours many times have to be much more intentional about creating these spaces for fellowship in, the, in their lives because they tend to be more introverted uh, and, and tend to, to isolate more than, than others. Um, thanksgiving can be difficult for, for a four um, because the, the practice of, of thanksgiving uh, sometimes is 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 tough. They 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 um, a, a four a four at times um, can experience like a critical spirit or anger or frustration or dissatisfaction, and and for them learning to learning to just turn that around and to uh, express gratitude even when things are frustrating um, are are very very difficult uh, for them. Um, so, so fours at their at their worst, um, they they internalize things, right? They they take things very personally. Maybe get offended really really easily. Uh, but at their at their best, they're some of the most profoundly creative people that you will ever know, and and they produce some of the greatest imagery uh, through, through art, through worship, through uh, songwriting that, uh, that the world is, has ever known. Now the scripture that Kristen read earlier is a great scripture for, for uh, fours. John 15, 11, Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you that your joy, uh, that, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Now, these things that Jesus was talking about in, in John 15 um, was, was what he covered in, in verses 1 through 10 of this passage. And that was sort of our theme uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Jesus was talking about, all, about abiding in Him, right? Abiding in Him. Um, 
And for, for all of us, but especially uh, fours, it is, it is so, so amazing to think about the fact that we are uniquely created in Christ. And our identity and our sense of self is complete in Him. And when we abide in Him, our joy, our joy is truly full. In fact, He is the greatest expression of joy uh, in, our, in our life. And this reassures us. Um, this reassures us that the feelings that the feelings that we might have of dissatisfaction um, or or the lack of approval from someone else, um, it doesn't really matter. Our joy is made full only in in Christ. So let's take a moment and let's just give thanks to God for His goodness and for the the fours. Uh, and let's just also just pray that God would help us uh, as we strive to be the best version of ourselves. And whether we're fours or some other number that, that maybe you've discovered in this, in this teaching or uh, that you will discover in weeks to come, let's just pray that God will help us to be reminded of what John 15 says, our joy is truly made full when we abide in in him. So let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you so much for who you are and the way that you made us. Each one unique, uh, each one special. And, and God, we all have a little bit of that four in us, whether it's our predominant personality type or not. Um, and Lord, you remind each of us that we are uniquely crafted and made in you. And Lord, we just ask you to help us to strive to be that best version of ourselves as we abide in you. May we find that fullness of joy in your strong and mighty name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.